Alright, g'day there. I'm Richard Musgrave Evans in Australia on the Murray River and welcome back. Today, again, one of my favourite things. Beautiful cliffs, plenty of birds singing in the background and just basically a nice sunny day. Pretty much everything, everything you could wish for. Okay, now today I'm back into the Belgian linen and palette knives rather than painting on the board. So it's just the clear prime Belgian linen. It looks like it's got no primer on it, but there's a clear primer to protect it so the paint doesn't soak in. I hope you're a noisy bunch. Palette knives and oil paint. Now I find oil paint, I can work better with oil paint rather than acrylics. Acrylics dry too quickly for this sort of style. So I tend to prefer the use of the oil. All right, now as you can see, what I've done is birds are noisy. What I've done is just put all the darks in first. That's done two things. It's built the composition, so in my mind I can see what I'm doing. And second, I've just gradiated from foreground to distance with the foreground darks gradiating off into the light. All right, so that's about it. Now, <clears throat> as usual, I'll go for the biggest difference between that raw linen and that subject. Now, I think today I might get the sky in first, so, go for some white there's a fair bit of a fair bit of haze down low I'm starting on the base of the sky so I'm going to mix some uh, yellow ochre and burnt sienna hopefully you can see what I'm doing there so that's a burnt sienna and white and yellow ochre mix maybe a tad more burnt sienna in the mix Just want to get a feel of what's going on here. Now that's a pretty light tone, so I might just uh, go a little bit darker, a bit less white. Okay, now I won't actually touch the horizon yet, I'll bring it down near the horizon, but I won't touch it because that horizon is blue and this is basically orange. And if they touch, they'll turn to a grey. So, later on when I think I'm ready, I'll bring the two together. Okay, so I'm just pushing that in. It's actually quite nice to work on the linen again. I enjoyed working on the board, but I just love working on the linen, so it's good to be back in the game. All right, so I've just added a bit of cobalt blue to that mix giving me a pale blue green there's just a little bit of green on the, on the sky in that area I want to go overboard with that just want to put a bit in like so okay Clean that off, right? I'll go for a bit more blue. I love using these big knives. These big knives are fantastic for getting it all in in time. There's not always a lot of time out here, and you want to paint the light how it looks at that moment in time. So, you don't really want to muck around about it, do you? Just put it in and do whatever you want, just uh, no need to get too stressed about everything, just put it all in and if it's not quite right you can work it out later. So there's a bit more blue and a bit more or less of that green stuff as I'm going up. A bit more blue than that. Just darken it a little bit. Just trying to get that in a bit of a pile out of the way. Now I'll go for a blue with a little bit more of that magenta, so it's more of a red blue as I'm getting higher to the horizon, uh, to the up into the heavens. Any sort of neutral blue, like a cobalt or whatever, with a little bit of red, which I'm using magenta in this case. Uh, 
about it. It's a little bit darker, there's a bit less white in the mix. Okay, that's all good. Now, where's my trusty paper towel? There we go. Alright, so... I'll just do a little bit of blending, I'll make it 2k away. Just pulling it together. And little marks to start with, like a little bit of a blend. Just work my way up. That's pulling all the colours into a uh, gradation, if you like. There's actually a little bit more grey on the horizon today than what I've put in, but I might get that in later. There's a lot of that yellow ochre beaming up, so I'll wipe the knife clean each time. I've got a bin here, hang on. I'm just going to pull that through like so. Wiping the knife clean each time as I do it, like so. There we go. Now just do whatever it takes to make a bit more of a blend. You can go this way, you can go that way. Whatever it takes. All right, now I'll just stand back and see if I've got the colours right. That will do for now. All right, so now, I'll just move some of that blue over here and I'll probably use some of it later. Just wanna mix up a few other colours in this area. So we've gotta get rid of that cold blue. Because I wanna mix some of the warm cliff colours. Run, just clean that up. Okay, so what I might do before I go any further is I've got, I don't know if you can see, you probably can, I've got the uh, yellow here, which is a cad yellow and a cad red. I'm just going to mix them together and create a beautiful orange. Because the cliffs are based on orange today, not red, not yellow. Oh, there's a bit of yellow, but not too much red, bit of orange. So I want to mix up an orange because I haven't got an orange here. Now, there we go. Now I have got an orange. Okay, let me analyse what's going on. I'll also just mix up a little bit of magenta and white here. That'll come in handy down the track. Look at that. Okay. Now, for the bulk of the cliffs, I'll go for yellow ochre. They're pretty bright, and we'll put a bit of that in. Let's have a look. That's real bright. That's lovely stuff. Yellow ochre and that orange I just built up. We'll put that in for starters. Just lightly touching, pulling it through. Now the thing here, of course, there's going to be beautiful reflections, isn't there? So, we'll put them in now. Just bring that cliff out a little bit further than that. Right. Not too bad. Now there's a bit of a uh, lighter tone going on in the cliff where it's a bit more weathered and there's less of that exposed orange rock. As the cliff falls away you get that beautiful orange rock but where it's been more exposed and weathered it seems to be more of a limestone grey so I'll just mix a more a slightly more key down uh, setup. Now just put that in lightly touching again here and there through. Now I don't know if you can see but off in the distance here we go, just there, We've got a paddle stand we're just having a bit of a uh, camp there. I don't think I'll put it in the subject because it's so small, it is actually a very big paddle steamer. 
but in this particular composition it's not really showing up too much and it probably will get in the way of the composition but it's just nice to have it there so all right those birds are not letting up are they all right let's get some of the water in we'll go for what color is the murray today yellow oak burnt sienna a few of those blues and whatever a bit of white Every day it's always different. You just kind of go with what's going at the time. Let's have a look what we've got. Because it's such a calm day, there's actually a bit more blue in it than that because it's reflecting a lot of the sky, as you can see. If it was a choppier day, there'd be a lot more of the color of the water. But when it's a calm day, it's a lot more of the color of the sky. Stick some of this stuff in here. We'll go a little bit more blue straight away. Now again, I can't, oops, I think I've gone over, hang on. Let's get that in. It's definitely richer down here. I'll get some more burnt sienna to uh, richen it up. As we're looking more down, I can see the color of the water rather than the reflection of the sky. Definitely a much richer colour. I'll get that in. This is fun, I love it. I love it. You can paint the studio, you can do whatever, but you cannot beat being on site. Just the vibe. darker on the edge here and what I'm trying to do is some of the reflections of the trees so we'll just go a bit darker less white nice color it's got a bit more yellow oak for it than that that's what I love about oh, it's pretty close don't worry about that what I love about painting on site is it's really easy when you're in trouble just to have a look and you can see the subtle colors in the studio, I was like, what colour was that? I don't remember, or I don't have to guess, but yeah. You can see it. I'm just pulling across and pulling down to soften. Just pull straight down here, and what that does is really softens it. That beautiful feeling of water. Okay, now we'll mix up a light blue with white. Actually, what am I doing? I've got some of it over here, haven't I? I was from earlier. Some of that sky colour is what I'm trying to achieve. Just going to stick a bit of it in here and there. What do we got? That needs more of those yellow ochres and whatever, which I've got over there. Take that off there, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Pull that in like that. Now what I did notice is some of that beautiful cliff reflection juts a little bit further out than I've done it. So hang on, let's just mix up a nice brew of oranges and yellows and whatever, reflective qualities. A bit more of those uh less white in the mix. straight down for now like that. Don't worry if you're going over the edges or whatever, it's all cool. You can work that out later. Hang on, bin run. It's all coming along. It's all fun. Right now, I'm just going to pull through with a knife to soften everything. See how it all blends it all together? Catching on there. Okay, now it must be time to 
bung a few other things in. Let's get some burnt sienas and yellow ochres. And white, of course. A bit of that orange. Just gonna... those cars coming through, a bit of white and orange, a few highlights of the cliff on the edge there, limestoney highlights, just stick them in. Right, we're getting there, we're getting there. Bit of a cliff formation here. Now I just stand back and have a look what's going on. Oops, sorry about that. Here we go. That's all looking good, but I can tell just composition wise, I don't want that lining up with that too much. I'm going to take it out a little bit further. Not too much further, but oh, there we go. It's nice and bright, isn't it? It's lightly dragging here and there to create the feeling of cliffs and chunkiness. Okay, always working with the biggest differences now. You can see, you can also hear the trucks, and but you can see here, I've got the shadow tones in there, but I haven't got the light tones, so I'm gonna put the light source on the trees. Now I can add some, let's wait for that truck to go. I can add some yellow ochre to that watercolor that I made earlier, just to richen it up a bit. Let's have a look, what have we got today? So I've added a bit of yellow ochre. Now I'm hardly even touching, I'm only just touching with the knife. And what that does, it lets all the undertones show through. You can work out how much you want to do later on. I might just put a bit here like that. Clean that off. Yes, okay, so as it goes back, the mix. I've just got some blue and some magenta there mixed up a beautiful pale purple. Flies. Always flies. Okay. Now I'm mixing some of that green with that and what that will do is key it all back. So we can do some of these tones a little bit further away. It needs a little bit more green. Just lightly touching, let's see what tones that. Might have to lighten that a bit. Get a bit of white. Mix it up a bit more so I can see what color it is. Here we go, it's just a little bit lighter in tone than the shadows. Obviously it needs to be lighter than the shadows, otherwise it won't look like light source. Uh oh, I'll get paint on myself in a minute. Up here it's closer on top of the cliff, so we've gone for that richer colour, lightly touching again. A little bit of that colour jutting out here. Let me just clean something up. These big knives are great, but sometimes they get a little bit clumsy. Gone over the edges. Don't worry, we'll just pull through and wipe it off. It's kind of a bit dead there, but we won't worry because I'll be able to clean that up when I feel like adding a bit more intensity. Now I'm going to get some white, mix it with that Viridian green, get a real high key bright, bright green. With that, I'll drop it into here, all these foliage colours and make a real yellow ochre, half green, half orange, bright, high intensity, ping! Needs more yellow ochre and orange, it's too green. I'm trying to get a foliage colour, very rich one, so lightly pull through. Alright, let me have a look. 
always working around, never finishing anything, always going for the biggest differences. Get some white and cat orangey yellow colour. Just sting. Sting a little bit in here and there. Bit of a cliff face there. clarify this edge a bit we've lost it as I said earlier let's uh, just pull this into shape with a few clean marks Fin run okay now what I need to do is completely take some of that paint off there because there's too much of those cold colors there and I want a beautiful warm tone so, just get a very clean knife, get a bit more of that cad orange and cad red, or cad yellow and cad red and make an orange. Look at how high key that is, isn't that beautiful? Now I'll get some yellow ochre with it, get a few flies, get a bit of white to lighten the tone a bit. Flies kicking in. Always flies. Okay. Just lightly pull it in. Clean the knife every time because what will happen is as I'm doing that, I'll be picking up some of those dirty tones underneath which I do not want on the knife because it'll kill the colours as I apply the next layer. beautiful day. What a beautiful day. Just adding a little bit more richness in some of these areas. Let's have a look what we got. Oh looking good. What I need to do is lighten the tone in the distance, that distant hill. A bit more haystack. He's a little further away than I've got it. So, just use some of these blues from the sky, a few magentas and blues. Just make a general <laughs> Just make a general light tone blue. Put some of that right on the horizon, like so. And I love painting outdoors. I should say people, I love painting outdoors. What I'm doing is just touching that warm horizon a little bit, but not intermixing it too much. Now I've got a beautiful pale blue on the side there. I'll have a look. Of course, what we've got is some beautiful shadows jutting out river from the gum trees on the other side so let's just clean up a bit of an area here I'm kind of bogging myself in I've got no room to move okay we'll go for some of that blue it's always good to make it really blue those shadows they really pop out well then or the seascape or the coastal <laughs> whatever it is inland coastal might just take a bit off there by using the palette off to scrape the paint so I can get a shorter mark a bit more 
more magenta as I get closer. That one we got a bit of red. Just trying to introduce into this area. A little bit of a darker edge where the uh, water is meeting the land. Stand back and have a little look, eh? Always working around, never finishing anything, like I say. Now it's time to knock up the light tones, just mixing all different colours I've got around the palette, using what I can. Mixing some highlights on the cliffs right in the distance. I've got the shadow tone, now I need that tone just where it's the light's hitting it. Why am I fluffing around with a little knife? How come I have not got the big knife out? That's better. It's such a beautiful day out there today, it's unbelievable. Pull through a bit there. Get the flies out. Clean the knife, clean the knife. Wipe that clean. Okay, what have we got here? Like a, doing a bit of a dance, knocking those flies away. All right, what I might do is just get a little toy knife out. Leave those ones there. Just gonna use a smaller knife. That'll be good for. Just knocking in a few of those foliage, I shouldn't say foliage, I should say branches of the gum trees. You can kind of use it on edge or do whatever you want. You get some really fine lines. Got the knife on edge, just pull along like so. so. I've got a mixture of white here with a little bit of cad, a little bit of cad colours in it, just to richen it up a bit, give it a light source colour. Flies again, they love me. At least I haven't got bugs on the Murray. Last time I painted on the Murray at the time of year, which was late summer, early autumn, I had tons of bugs, but now they're all gone, so. That's great. Alright, where are we? A little bit more of this. White. We've got just a few highlights here. I won't get carried away. I'll just stick a couple in. Just to give the feeling of detail. Shoe fly. Those kookaburras starting up now. Always such a great sound. Okay, always working around. Never finishing anything. This is the base of the cliff here. There's just a few, just a few trees hanging on for dear life. I'll just throw them in. Same time, they can earn themselves a trunk or two as well. Maybe one up there. <laughs> We're getting there, we're getting there. I 
Well, that's all well and good. Might just grab the big guy, put this in the bin. Just standing back and analysing. I'll just clear this. I reckon on the horizon there, there's some really distant hills. I reckon I can go a tad lighter in tone. So, a bit of that white, a bit of that blue. Gonna be a fairly light tone. But a fairly nice clean colour. That's why I got rid of all those other blues because they were a little bit, uh, they had a few other mixes in amongst them. Whereas this is a fairly clean blue. Now you've got to be delicate with these distance ones, but if you get them right, they're really effective. That could be too light, I'll just have a look. Or, it could be right on the money. That is a beautiful tone. Pinging and stinging the distance off. Right, I'll stand back. clean knife, just going to soften that edge there and I might even do the same over here. First I'll bring that down, oh here we go, that's why you've got to clean the knife each time. Just get that paint off and bring that down. What I'm doing is basically with a clean knife pulling through paint that's already there and that kind of softens and blends. The thing with a the thing with a palette knife, it can be quite harsh as opposed to a brush. But if you do some of those slipping and sliding techniques once you've already got the paint in, it's a great way to soften it. Knife on edge, I might just... Uh, We had a really fine line there. What do we got? Okay, um, some yellow ochre. Some white. Mix it up with some of those tones. Just make it a fairly neutral colour. Go slightly greyer than that. I'll get a bit of magenta for that. Pop it back with a bit of magenta in the mix. Just painting some of the grasses that are there. There's a few grasses in some paddocks out there. There's also More of the river out there, which I'll put in. Let's have a look at that. Getting there, getting there now. And they're a very light tone. I can notice these trees are not quite dark enough. Got to be a little bit lighter in tone to be able to see. Like I've got the shadow of the cliff in the distance, but you need a little bit more light on the light source. And that is too much light, isn't it? Very subtle, but once you get it right, it'll pop. Could have a bit more magenta. It's a subtle, like I said, they're subtle colours. But once you get it right, the illusion of reality is quite easy. Easy enough, I won't say too easy. more of those trunks as we go off into the distance. Oops, what are we doing here? Scrape a bit of that off. Let's have a look. It's all 
coming along. I can see one of those tones in the distance is a little bit dark, so I'll knock up a lighter version of it. Magenta and blues. It's quite a pale cliff. Definitely needs more uh, magenta than that, so white. About the right tone, but it was too blue. So what I've done now is added a bit more red to it in the form of magenta. Have a look. When I do that, you, you can see what I've been doing all the time. That's good, I haven't been looking too much. Have a look at that. Those birds can really kick up a fuss, can't they? Got to get the right tone there. Amazingly light, believe it or not. There's another car. It's an amazingly light tone. Let's have another look. I'm just going to take a bit of paint off to clarify that edge. You can see by taking the paint off, I put the light tone on. But I lost some of that shadow tone, so I can scrape the paint back off to bring it back to the tone. Okay, yellow ochre. Bit of orange. Just gonna well, we pull a bit more intensity there. Just powering it up a little bit. Alright, let's have a look. Light reds, give me some of that. Give me some of that, give me some of that. Lighten it right off. A very light magenta -y kind of red kicking in here. Let's pull some of that in. That's adding way more power to the mix, which is what we wanted. That's a much better version. Okay, so now we'll just do a big run. Do the fly, do the fly salute. Grab this one. Grab a tiny bit more white. Fresh white, very clean white. Mix up another brew of orange. I'll do it over here where I've got a bit of room. I've got the cad red, the cad yellow, making a real high key orange. Gonna get some white, half mix it in with the mix. Half mixing gives a lot of power. Right. Feeling the energy of where the objects need to go. Wipe it clean. Just putting a few highlights here and there in the mix. Let's have a look at that.
hier. All right, well there you go, that's about it. Okay, so I've got the basics in. Now just at the end there, I'm just, just trying to peek that area a bit because that is my focal area. Just wanted it to be very bold and at the same time very simplified in that area. And basically I've got the oval effect. I might just wait for that truck to go. <laughs> Basically we've got the overall effect as you can see, beautiful sunny day, beautiful reflections, the whole works and jerks. Now I find this clear prime Belgian linen's good for painting on because you can quite often, like I've done in this bottom foreground, just leave it raw. If it's almost the same colour, you can leave it raw, which kind of gives it a nice raw feel to the work. Okay, now, yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much it. We've got the light and shadow, we've got the calm feeling of a nice sunny day. Pretty much everything. All right, I might get the camera off and let you have a look. Okay, no worries, thank you. All right, let's pan in and have a look. Now there's your subject, obviously. And you can see what I've really tried to emphasize here, those beautiful cliffs. Now you can see I've gone, the beauty of working on site is you can really see the subtle colors and you can pull them out probably pulled them out a tad more than they were but standing here I can see those colors so if you're in the studio trying to make them up well half your luck but when you're here for some reason everything is a lot more obvious and a lot clearer and it's uh, a much better way to paint direct from the subject now you can see in these focal areas I've really put massive chunks in the foreground, huge marks where the limestone chunks are really jutting out. Contrasting the very, very soft water, those reflections and then those beautiful shadows from the gum trees on the other side, casting across the river. There you go. Murray River, tranquil, beautiful day. No worries, thank you.